For factors affecting performance, there are four different types of training that you need to learn. There's aerobic training, there's anaerobic training, there's flexibility training, and then there's strength training. Each training type has its own training method. Aerobic training can be continuous, also known as uniform, which is when the athlete performs the same activity at the same intensity for a specified duration of time, such as going for a bike ride. Fartlek training is when the athlete participates in a single activity with random varying intensities. This could be going for a run, where the speed varies from a walk at 4 km an hour to a sprint at 20 km an hour, and then slows down to 10 km an hour before going back up to 14 km an hour. Each intensity could go for the same length or could vary. Aerobic or long interval training involves a single activity with specified changes in intensity at specific times or lengths within the session. These changes will alternate between two set intensities and generally have a longer duration or length at the higher intensity than at the lower intensity. Finally for aerobic training there's circuit training. The circuit training method is various activities that are normally done for a set period of time before moving on to the next activity. An athlete would rotate through each activity until the circuit is complete. For anaerobic training, you need to know the short interval training method. Though the ratio can change, this method normally has a 1 to 2 ratio with short intense work periods and longer rest periods. This is the opposite of the long interval aerobic training method. Flexibility training aims to increase a joint's range of motion. The static stretching method is when a muscle is stretched to a length that is uncomfortable, not painful, and held for a given length of time. The optimal time to hold the stretch is between 30 and 60 seconds, for example, touching your toes. Ballistic stretching involves a bounce or swing. This training method can be dangerous and is normally only used by elite athletes. An example would be leg swings. Proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation, or PNF stretching, involves a static stretch of about 30 seconds, followed by an isometric contraction of the stretch muscle until the stretch is no longer felt, about 5 to 10 seconds. Then a further lengthening of the muscle to hold another static stretch, about 10 seconds. Examples are similar to static stretching, but have an isometric contraction within them. Dynamic stretching is when an athlete performs movements that take their joints through their range of motion and produce some form of stretch of the selected muscle. These movements are continuous and the stretch is not held. This type of stretching simulates most closely the movements and stretching involved in the majority of sports and is often used during a warm-up. An example would be taking a walking lunge. Strength training is any training that is done which will improve an athlete's strength. Weight training is the dominant form of resistance training and involves lifting a certain weight against gravity to train specific muscles or groups of muscles. Free weights often involve lifting dumbbells, barbells or other forms of weight. It has the advantage of developing the stabilizing muscles for movements along with the major muscle groups involved. Fixed weights utilize machines to lift the weight and often have a pulley or lever system. The advantage of this method is that it helps the athlete to learn the correct technique and to experience equal resistance throughout the full range of motion. Weight training is most suited to sports that require large amounts of strength or power such as rugby league, or high jump. Elastic training uses various forms of elastic to provide the resistance to develop strength. Elastics are highly portable but do not provide a consistent resistance. This method of training is often used in rehabilitation, especially of weaker muscles. This method of training is best suited for sports which require use of smaller muscles. These sports could include arm wrestling or darts. Hydraulic training uses machines that use water or air compression to provide the resistance throughout the movement. This method of training increases the resistance the faster the movement is executed. It also is good for sports that require fast movements throughout a full resistance. Such sports would include rugby league or swimming. The Learn 2 for the syllabus asks you to assess the relevance of the types of training and training methods for a variety of sports by asking questions such as which types of training are best suited to different sports, which training methods would be most appropriate and why, and how would this training affect performance? Jot down a few of your answers for these questions and we'll discuss them in class. If you want further information, please visit the website pdhpe.net.